Hey YouTubers, welcome to John's Garage. Today we're going to be working on a Acura 3.2 TL and it needs new front brake pads and rotors. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need to do is jack up this car. So we're going to need a floor jack. So let's go get one. And there it is. So let's uh, get this over to the front of the car. Let's get it jacked up. So underneath the front bumper, the saddle of this jack is going to go right underneath the cross beam. Okay, so right in the center, about a foot back from the front bumper, let's start jacking it up. Just take most of the weight off. Before the tires come off the ground, you want to stop before they come all the way off the ground. So what you want to do is get a 19 millimeter socket and a breaker bar and just loosen each one. It's like a, a quarter turn just to get them loose before the car is jacked up all the way. Because you want the you want the tire on the ground so that it doesn't spin around on you. Okay, go around, do the other side tire, the front the front wheel as well. Now that you've busted the lug nuts loose on both front wheels, let's start jacking the car up. Okay, now that we've got the wheel off the ground here, let's get a set of jack stands for the front of the car. One for the left front, one for the right front. And they go right underneath here, just behind the front mud flap. So just behind the front mud flap, you'll see here a little arrow, right here a, a metal flange sticking out. You want to center that right under there. Do that on the left front and right front on both sides, okay? Okay, now that we've got both of our jack stands in place where we want them, it's time to lower the car back down. So let's twist this release, and the car's going to go down until you hear it resting on both jack stands. And turn it right to lock it. Now let's go check the jack stands and see how they look. Okay, that's right where we want it. That's good. Let's go check the other side. Okay, so we got both of our jack stands good. Next thing you want to do is put blocks behind the wheels. I made these from some 4x4s that I cut up. You don't need anything fancy to work on a car. Just cut them in little triangles. One on the 
front, one in the back, and that way the car is not going to roll. For safety reasons, you never get under a car when it's on a jack. You make sure it's on jack stands, the wheels are blocked, the car is stable, it's not going to fall on you. Then you can get under a car, so never put your hands, even if you're changing a spare tire, don't ever put your hands underneath the tire while it's up in the air. At any second, a jack can fail and smash you. So. Be safe. Okay, so back at the front wheel. Now we're going to remove the wheel by taking all the lug nuts off. So once again, with our 19 millimeter, we'll take all these off. Lefty Lucy, turn it counterclockwise to the left. Get each, each lug nut off. Set those aside. Now go around to the passenger side, do the same thing. Okay, so now you want to take your key and put it in the ignition and turn it just so the dash lights come on and then crank your steering wheel all the way to the left. And then take your key out and let's uh, remove the caliper. Okay, so to do this next step, you're going to need a 19 millimeter open end and a 14 millimeter socket. So we're going to put the socket here, 14. Make sure it's set to go counter, let's see, counterclockwise. There we go. Okay, so we're pulling up on that one to go counterclockwise. And this one, the 19, is going to go on here just to hold it in place. So you're going to work these two against each other. Well, let's get a breaker bar. Okay, so now we've got a breaker bar instead. And we're going to pull up on it to go counterclockwise. That makes it much easier. Leverage. The longer the lever, the more leverage you have. A very old engineering principle. The principle of the lever. Now we can switch back to our ratchet. This one doesn't do much. It's just going to hold it from spinning. If you see that spinning, you can grab it and stop it from spinning. So take this socket, so I can get you. Take that bolt, just unthread it and take it out, okay? You can take that off too. And now this caliper will just turn up. We gotta take one more, one more little bolt out. 10 millimeter because it's, I think it's 10, we'll see in a minute. It's pinching that hose. That's our, that's our brake fluid hose. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to pull off the brake pads. You can see this is a vented caliper. And on these brake pads here, there's an inner and an outer pad. So you can just grab the pad here and work it out. There we go. And you see this inner pad has a wear indicator. That can't go on the outside or it'll hit the, the wheel, the rim, as it's spinning. So this is your inner pad. And you can see it's got quite a bit of wear on it. We're almost down to our limit. So we're going to change that. The outer pad, let's grab it and pull it out of there. And you'll see, I, I take the shims off of mine. They're supposed to make them quieter, but they don't. They often slip out of place and damage your rotor. So that would normally be on the back. I just peel it off. They're just held on with a little bit of glue from the factory. I'll show you on the new ones before I put them on. But this is your outer pad. There's no wear indicator. And then also, there's these little pieces of hardware here. There's one on the top, one on the bottom, and that just comes off. You'll get new ones in your kit when you go to the auto parts store. So there's one at the top, just pulls off. They're held in there, just tight, tightly fit on their own. Okay, and this is your piston. So in a minute, we're gonna wanna press that in because the pads, the new ones, are gonna be much thicker. So we're going to have to press that in. That moves as they wear. That's, that's your piston that does the braking. It, it applies clamping force. And these pads are friction material. And they go against the, the metal rotor as it's turning. And the pressure and the friction will stop that rotating mass. So these pads are lifetime guarantee from AutoZone. So I'm going to get them off the other side, and then I'm going to go down to the auto parts store and get some new pads for free. I just thought of one more thing that we should do before we get rid of the old pads. We talked about compressing this piston. So one thing you could do if you don't have fancy tools like, like this, I got this for my Lexus that has multiple pistons and having a tool like this is makes it easier to compress multiple pistons but this Acura like most other Hondas only has one piston very simple braking system not for racing or high performance really so what you can do if you don't have a fancy tool is you can take one of your old pads before you get rid of it and you could stick it on there and then get a, a channel lock like this and put it to the maximum size. I've seen people do this with all kinds of contraptions they've made. With, you can do it with something as simple as a large screwdriver and you want to get on there and go like this and compress it. But before you do that, Take a look at your reservoir for your master cylinder because it's probably going to overflow because you're pressing fluid back up to that reservoir. So make sure you've got room in there. And don't ever spill brake fluid on your paint job because brake fluid is highly corrosive. It will eat the paint right off your car. If you spill one drop, you're going to have a hole in your paint in that one spot. So protect your paint. So let's take some of the fluid out of the master cylinder reservoir and we're going to use a simple turkey baster you can get it at the 99 cent store so let's do that okay so up in the engine bay there is the brake fluid reservoir so just give that a quarter turn take that off and we'll get some paper towels so we don't dribble that but then we're going to take our turkey baster and a bottle that we don't care about, an old drinking bottle, plastic bottle. And we're going to take our turkey baster and we're going to squeeze this and suck 
some fluid out, put it in this bottle, and do that a couple times till we're low enough that we can squeeze the brake caliper piston in, and we're going to see this fluid rise as we do that. So as you're squeezing in, keep an eye on that. Don't let it overflow. You make a mess everywhere. Okay. So very carefully, we have sucked enough fluid out of there. So I'll show you here. We got that down far enough that I think we can compress that caliper now, the piston in the caliper. Okay, go back under the car. Let's put this in place. And give it a squeeze. Let's see if I can get you a shot of that. see the piston going in as I am squeezing and I'm just going to stick my head up take a look at the reservoir we're good we're not overflowing squeeze 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 we are all the way flat against there sorry about that there we go the piston is all the way in. It is flush with the caliper and we're good to go for new pads on this side. But we're going to do some cleanup first, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so I pressed in the caliper on the passenger side. They're both front ones are pressed in now. I want to show you the fluid level. It is right where it should be at the full line. So we can actually put this back on. You can't move it far because there are wires on it for the sensor to tell if you're low on fluid. There, quarter turn and it snaps in place. Anyway, it is up to our max line. So we are at maximum, so we're good. We should not have let any air into the hydraulic brake lines because I didn't drain it completely to the bottom. So the two enemies of your braking system, you never want to have moisture like water because that's compressible. And brake fluid is not compressible, so when you step on the brakes, they are should be rock solid, so there's no sponginess. So you never want to have moisture, you never want to have air. So if you get air, that's compressible, moisture is compressible, brake fluid is not. You want solid brakes when you step on them. That's what hydraulic fluid is. It's basically a 10 weight oil that doesn't compress. And as you're braking and your brakes wear down, your pads wear, that's why that fluid goes down. And then over time you have to add a little more fluid to keep it from getting down to the minimum on your reservoir. So you got a, a minimum and up here a maximum. Max min. There's not a lot of room, but that's basically the wear of your pads as they wear down. This fluid goes down. Hopefully you don't have a leak anywhere. That would be a different problem. But as pads wear down, that's going to go down. Pads get thinner. So we just pressed them in. We had to take some fluid out because I had been adding fluid to keep it at the top over time. So we took some out. We're going to put new pads on and we should have enough room for our new pads because our pistons have been pressed in. Okay, I thought of one more thing I want to show you before I run off to the auto parts store. I want to measure the thickness of those pads. So here we have from Harbor Freight Tools, pretty cheap. It's a caliper and it is in SAE in metric. So let's measure those old pads and see what was left. So one thing I do is I take out the batteries, right? It's right here. You just slip this out. It's kind of hard to find batteries, so I take it out when I'm done. And then it says you have to zero this thing. 
So let's press the zero. This is pretty precise, so it, I would expect it would change with temperature and usage. So let's open this up. Let's get a reading here. I got one of the inner pads. They seem to wear a little more. So we're at nine point, well, let's say 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter is total thickness. And then we'll subtract what the backing material is. 6.62. Okay. So let's check our book here. It says the standard new pad is about 10.5 to 11.5 millimeters in thickness. And that is the pad only without the backing. And it's the thinnest that pad is allowed to be, to be safe, is 1.6. So we measured our total thickness at approximately 10 millimeter. And then we took off the thickness of the metal backing. And we have about 3.38 pad thickness. So these were very well worn, but still within the safety limit because you're allowed 1.6 millimeter pad, and we had 3.38 pads. So we were still safe, but it really is time to change. We've got a lot of miles on these, and we're gonna put new rotors on anyway, and clean up the uh, calipers and lubricate them. And we will be bleeding the brakes later. But for today, we are not gonna bleed the brakes because we're only doing the front, and if you bleed them, you gotta do all four. And the fluid is still okay. So I will show you later. You can see our, our rotor has some, looks like an old fashioned record and it should be very smooth. So we're gonna go ahead and change that. And let's see if there's a lip on this thing. Tiny bit of a lip, not, not bad. So uh, we will do the fluid in another video because we'll have to jack up the entire car, take all four wheels off and bleed all four brakes. And that'll be another video, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so it's time to go to the auto parts store and get the replacement pads. And we're back. So the pads for this car is a uh, Duralast Gold Ceramic 787. DGC 787. And they're about 55 bucks, but these were completely free because... They have a lifetime warranty. Okay, so let's see. What do we get in this box here? Okay, some brake lube. And new hardware. That's good because I hate cleaning the old ones. And some new pads with the shims on them. I am going to take these off because they will eventually come off on their own. So these are... Quite a bit thicker than the old ones. Let's measure them. 17.1 minus 6.4. So the pad thickness on a new one is 10.7 millimeters. Okay, since we're going to be changing the rotor, we've got to get the entire caliper off. So we're going to take this top pin out. Slide the whole thing back. We've got our hanger here. Let's hang that by the spring. And now on the back side, There's a uh, 17 millimeter bolt. There's two of them, one in the top here, one in the bottom. So we're gonna put that 17 on there and use a breaker bar and take the caliper bracket off. 
Okay, this, this whole thing's gonna come off. Okay, so we're loosening those two 17 millimeter bolts. I'm taking that caliper bracket off. That's what it looks like. Take that off. Okay, now we got our number three Phillips. I'm gonna take these little set screws out. And on a Honda, these could be a bear. I put never seize in there, anti seize. Last time I took them off, I do that every time. And you see, these were not that hard to get out. If you live in a snowy climate where they use salt on the road, good luck getting them out. You might have to use a, a hammer type screwdriver that you pound on. You might have to drill these out. But never seize is your best friend. Anti seize compound. And then it's a floating rotor, so it's just floats on there and you just take it off. Now you notice in this car, there's no splash shield behind here. I took it off because it doesn't rain much here and these rotors get hot in the hot desert climate. So the uh, splash shield has been removed and I'm gonna put new rotors on that are slotted that'll deal with the rain. Okay, so we're gonna be changing both rotors, so I thought I'd try these Duralast GT rotors. So it is, uh, for this car, it is a GT31275. Of course, made in China like everything else these days. Got these at AutoZone. And they are slotted, is why I got them, to see if I can deal better with the rain without these splash guards on this car. So let's see what we got in here. Because these are steel, they're prone to rust in the rain. So these have a coating on them. Not really necessary in cold, in warm, dry climates. So but if you live where it rains a lot, you might want that if you drive in the snow. And these are these are slotted rotors. And the veins on these, the cooling veins are not directional. They are straight through. You can see straight through the other side there. I'm waving my fingers there. And there's no slots here. Unfortunately, it is a Honda and they don't do a lot for cooling on these things. That's why I took off the splash guards. So these are not directional. They can go on the left side or the right side on the front. And they do have the holes for the set screws. It's not totally necessary, but if you're getting your tires changed and they took the wheel off, this could potentially come off a little bit because it's a floating rotor. So those set screws, just keep it in place while the wheel is off. And then when you put the wheel back on, you put the five lug nuts and that holds the wheel and the brake together on the hub. So the set screws are not completely necessary, but it is put on there by Honda. And I think they do that because they don't want this to get cocked at an angle or anything while you're changing wheels. So good idea, but use that anti-seize so that they don't get frozen on there, especially if you live in a climate where they put salt on the roads. With all the heat here, boy, the heating and cooling, heating and cooling is going to make those, those uh, little set screws be hard to get out too. So anti-seize on those. Okay, so Permatex anti-seize. For these little set screws, always a good idea. So let's put some of those on, get ready to put these on the car. So let's the little set screws there and there, line those up.
before we do this, I want to show you one more thing. On the hub, we want to clean this. I want to show you why. Because you could get enough buildup of rust that the rotor is going to feel like it's warped. It's going to, to exaggerate, it's going to wiggle like this when you're braking. Because as it's spinning, it's not totally flush. So we're going to clean this, especially in this groove right here. Okay, this wheel's a little bit large for this, but I think I can get it in here like this. cleaned up. Okay, let's see if we got that cleaned. Looks pretty clean. We're going to check this with a runout indicator. So we're going to get some anti-seize compound on these set screws and we're going to put a lot of it. We do not want these things getting seized in there. Another one. on there. Get our number three Phillips. Put that in there. You want to clean your hands really good. This anti-seize can get on everything. It can get on your car seats, your steering wheel. You don't want to do that. So clean your hands real good. Get that screw in there nice and tight. Wipe off the extra anti-seize that may have come out. Okay, now we're going to check to make sure there's no run out out of tolerance. So, what we have here is a clamping dial indicator from Harbor Freight Tools. It wasn't very expensive, but you've got to be really careful. These things break really easy. So I'm going to show you how um, it's recommended to put the lug nuts on the studs. We have our two set screws, but let's tighten the lug nuts on there to make sure there's no wiggle in this at all when we're checking the run out. So we're just going to put the lug nuts on. Get them fairly tight. We don't want to torque them on there. We'll just, we'll just snug them up. Minimum thickness 26 millimeter on this new rotor. So if you want to measure the thickness of that when it's wearing down, you can measure it says it's supposed to be 26 millimeter minimum. Anyway, let's, back, let's get back to checking the run out. Okay, so I clamped onto a suspension part and put the dial up here and show you the dial here. So we zeroed the dial and as we move, this dial should not move more and a small amount. Let me get you that specification from Acura. Okay, so on this dial, every mark on the dial is 0 0.001. Well, set it back to zero again.
There, it's at zero. Turning. It's at one and a half. Let's go the other way. Yes, it's binding. We're at three. That's zero. Zero. We're at one, two. One, two, we're at two plus and two minus. So we're within tolerance. See? Just when I push a tiny bit, it moves a little bit, so I'd say we're okay. Goes between plus two, minus two, so that's within 0 .004 inches. Minus two, plus two. We're good. Okay, so now we're going to clean all the moving parts in the brake caliper with this uh, brake cleaner. So, wherever there's a slide part, we're going to clean it off. So, we're going to take these rubber dust seals out. We slid this one caliper pin out. The other one is up in the caliper. So we're going to just clean it off while it's up there. So we're going to break clean this cleaning these off. So we'll clean all these parts and then we've got some silly glide brake lubricant. It's silicone. And we will lubricate all these pins. There's two pins. And then the um, parts where the brake pads sit, I'll show you on the pads specifically where to put this. Okay, so right now we're going to put the caliper bracket back on. This is a 17 millimeter bolt. Two bolts, 17 millimeter, holds the brake caliper on to the hub. I'm gonna get these nice and tight. Get a breaker bar on it. Make sure they're nice and tight. Probably about 90 foot pounds on there. Nice and tight. Okay. So now we're going to put our silicone lubricant on the two pins. So every time you put your foot on the brakes, it presses that piston, and these guide pins have to be able to slide. So we got our little rubber boots on, and so the make sure I got the right pin here. We got a top pin and a bottom pin. So 
some lube on this other pin here. Now, when you clean these, you're looking for any kind of corrosion, cracking, anything that could compromise your braking system. And these two tongues here for the outer brake pad. Put some lubricant on there. It'll stop your pad from making squealy sounds because we're going to take off those silly shims. So, let me get this caliper in the right place. Get our coat hanger out of the way. So that is the top pin that I lubed. We've got the rubber boot on there. We put that in. Just set it down there for a minute. So you can see we've got the rubber boot there. So that makes this the bottom pin. So I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to slide this in to the bottom. Make sure the boot Get the air out of the boot, squeeze it, make sure it's on there properly. Set that there for a minute. Okay, as I said before, I don't like these shims. So you just stick a screwdriver under, pop them off. They come off pretty easy. You just have a little bit of crummy glue on them. I learned this from a guy that would race prep cars and what happens is these things have a tendency to come off and then gouge into the hat of the rotor. It happened a long time ago on one of my other Hondas and ever since then I have always pulled these off. I don't get any squealing when I'm braking because if you put for the piston put some lube here and then for the outer pad on the two tongues, put some Silaglide on there. You're not going to have any squealing. Your brake's going to be fine. So make sure this surface doesn't get contaminated. Also, when you get plain steel rotors, they have a lot of lubricant. So you want to keep some from rusting while they're in the box. Take your brake clean, spray all over them, get them clean. This one doesn't appear to have any, but I don't know what's on it, so I'm going to spray it anyway. Maybe my greasy hands, who knows. Spray the front side, back side, get them clean, get them ready for the pads so that there's no contamination on the pads. Okay, let's get our brake pad hardware. So, Honda Acura, they make it really simple. There's four of these, they're all the same. You stick it in there. Squeeze it down, make sure it's seated all the way. So that one's in. Do the same for the top. Press it in there and get it seated all the way. Flush, make sure it's all the way in, all the way around. There's little claws on, on there that make it seat. Okay, now we got our brake hardware. You want to put some lube on the ears. Okay. And because this one, this has the brake wear indicator, you want to put in the middle a big circle of lube because that's where the piston is going to touch. Normally you'd have your shims on there, but we took those off. So put on both ears, top and bottom ear, a good amount of lube, because the ears on the inside sit in here and they slide 
So they slide as you brake, so they slide in and out. So you want to have a good amount of lube, but do not get the lube on the rotor, okay? Get a bunch of lube on there, but not on the pad, not on the rotor, because that's your braking surface. Okay, so we have lubricated the points we need to, so we will set this in the bottom in our hardware. So we push that in, and we get a outer pad. Outer pad has no wear indicator. So we lube the two ears. Careful not to get anything on the pad surface. Put the top in first. I'll try the bottom. Let's see. Push down on the bottom. It's always fun with new pads because they're so thick. That's always fun. It always takes a bit of wiggling to get it in. Let's see how that looks there. So we got our two pads in. Now we're ready to lower the caliper onto it. And it's going to be a tight fit because these are brand new pads. Got some air bubble in her. There we go. So we got to push this pin on the bottom in a little bit. There we go. There, nice fit. So now we have a bolt that goes into the bottom caliper pin. Then we got our brake line up here. So we got our brake line 12 millimeter bolt. Keeps the brake line in place so it doesn't get pinched anywhere when you're turning. Let's get our wrenches and tighten those. So our brake line maybe calls 12 millimeter. It doesn't need to be super tight, just holding a brake line in place. And then we've got our 14 millimeter caliper pin bolt. Of course, we may need to, whoops, okay, righty tighty. And we got our 19 millimeter to hold the other end of it in case it starts to turn. So we work the two wrenches against each other. That's tight. Let's check the upper one, even though we never loosened it. It's tight, righty tighty. Bottom pin, righty tighty. OK. 
because this really is your braking. We want to make sure it's tight. So put the breaker bar on there. Make sure it's tight. Get our 19 on here. It's tight. Our 19. Okay, it's tight. It was probably 60 foot pounds or so on there. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is put the wheel on and then we're going to go for a drive. And this is actually the most important part where we want to bed the material from those ceramic pads into the new rotor. And since these have a coating on, it's going to scrape off that coating too. So some people call it brake burnishing or bedding or break in. So we're going to drive in a not so busy area, uh, 50 miles an hour, and then brake pretty hard down to 10 miles an hour and then let go of the brake. And then get up to speed, go about a quarter mile, and then 50 miles an hour, hit the brakes pretty hard until you get down to 10 miles an hour. Do this five or 10 times, drive around, you know, let them cool a little. It might make the brakes smoke, especially if there was a coating on the brakes from the factory. So it'll be a little smoky maybe. And uh, that is really important to exchange material between the uh, pads and the rotor. These are both new surfaces, so they need to mate to each other and burn off any gases or coatings that were in there from the factory. So that's really important. So let's let's put the wheel on, uh, take it off the jack stands, and go for a drive. So got the wheel on here. We're just gonna get it cam tight while it's up in the air. We're gonna do a crisscross pattern. Okay. When it's on the ground, we're going to torque it with a torque wrench. Okay, so now we're going to jack the car up a little bit. We've got both, both wheels on. So we're going to pull out the chocks. The left and right jack stand. And now we're going to lower the car. Everything is out of the way. Okay, so we're on the ground now. So we got our 19 millimeter socket on our torque wrench. Now I like to go to 100 foot pounds, tiny bit more than spec, but 100 foot pounds is good. So crisscross pattern, alternating. It's 100. Come across here. 100. Come across here. 100, over here, 100, 100, check the first one again, 100, do the same thing on the passenger side, all five lug nuts crisscross 100 foot pounds. Okay, back from our test drive, went from 50 down to 10, some hard braking, uh, 8 or 10 times to get it nice and hot. And it burned off all that coating where it said the word GT. And not as smoky as I've seen from other pads and rotors. Um, especially plain steel, they usually have an oily coat that has to burn off and it's really smoky. But overall, these are pretty good. Here's the passenger side. Remember, anything you do, tires, brakes, 
Whatever, you always do the whole axle. That means both front, left and right, or both rear, left and right. Keep your tires and brakes the same so that you have nice, even stopping. So these are nice and hot. We're going to let them cool down overnight and then go to work tomorrow and, uh, and see how I like it. And it's supposed to rain on Tuesday and Wednesday. That's the, the main reason I got these slotted rotors because I took off the splash guards to get better cooling and so I need a little help in uh, wet braking conditions. It doesn't rain here often but when it does I need a little help. So I'll let you know later how that turns out. I gotta record my mileage here. Let's see what do we have. 600,679 miles. You got that. That is right. 600,679. Original engine, 2000 Acura TL. With brand new brakes now. At least on the front. And if you liked the video you just saw about replacing front brakes, be sure to subscribe to my channel, John's Garage for more informative videos.